And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing. नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् Homage to the, the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, keep your right palm on your left and back head straight in one line. And bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times. And say so, Patveva, or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this evening to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation and later observe the impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within the feeling, form, feeling, sensation, formations and recognition. So in the beginning, mentally relax your body step by step. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes, relax your ears, relax your nose, relax your upper lip, relax your lower lip, relax your chin, relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth, relax your tongue, relax your mouth, relax your throat, relax your neck, relax your shoulders, Relax your arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips.
Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your whole abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your cold blood, relax your pancreas, relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your whole abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows, and whole skeleton. And release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. So bring your attention to the lower part of the body and observe is there any strong sensation, tightness, heaviness, heat. See is there any feelings that you can recognize? Just get a mental note. Don't change anything, just let things to be as it is but recognize, you may see many places. Just get a mental note and observe. Without reacting and observing is difficult, but that is what you have to practice. Bring attention to the lower back area. And observe and see if there any strong sensation, any feelings.
in your upper back and shoulders. And observe head to toes and find the one place wherever in your body. Find the strongest place that you feel any sensation, tightness, heaviness. Just observe and see how it changes. Because the pain itself not solid. It's moving, changing, rising, disappearing. To see it. Don't put any name on it. And bring attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. So in the beginning, deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. Find the sensation in front of your nose and your upper lip area. And just settle down. So allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen itself naturally. So when it happened through the sensation of it, just recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. So don't try to make anything happen, don't count or don't hold. Just simply allow it to happen naturally.
follow the entire continuation of the inhalation exhalation. So when it happens, recognize this is the beginning, this is the middle, and this is the end of the inhalation or exhalation. Also, you may see some inhalation, exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just accept it. Drop all the details related to inhalation, exhalation. Just keep focus to the sensation anywhere in your body and see how it change and how it impermanent and unsatisfactory nature. You cannot hold that feelings and there is no self it's moment by moment, everything change. Head to toes in you.
bring your attention to your body. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, mentally repeat after me with clear intention. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will. Wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. And expand the capacity little by little. To your backside. to your left side. To your right side. Downward, and upward.
to all six directions at once like the moon the sun spread the light spread the energy without any condition without any limitation without any resistance or without any judgment let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy से साधु 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 सो डियर दामा प्रैक्टिशनर्स व्हेन इट कम टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग द धम्म प्रैक्टिसिंग मेडिटेशन इज एक्स्ट्रा थिंग एंड इट इज नॉट that you have to to practice meditation and without practicing meditation you cannot get into dhamma it is not kind of like that method this so practicing meditation develop your mind and clear your mind so if you have that clarity already so then it is up to you to remind it and you can keep cleaning your mind and you just to 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 observe yourself you can practice meditation or to make more clear yourself you can practice meditation otherwise it is not that uh, necessary for everybody to practice meditation so because if if we come to that kind of point point of view then it's a, it's a kind of like a, we go to extreme level of something that is not the buddha's teaching so then how you know that your mind is clear so one thing is that whatever came to your mind whatever you saw in your life whatever you thought in your life see what happened to it have you ever experienced it the exactly the same way oh it's completely opposite side now you experience even just forget about the whole life just one day just for a day when somebody smile and you thought oh it is friendly smile and then when you look back and he stolen something and disappeared see that's the, the what you understood is not working even as husband wife as children friends and family members when you have a conversation can you come to a clear perception or clear understanding and you know that then in the evening maybe in the morning you have a conversation if you say in the evening oh i thought it was like this i thought it was like that so that's mean what whatever the information came to you you didn't see it 
you manipulated with your ideas so then you then you need to clean your mind so like that when it come to the dharma it is not a cream level of you know the go, you go to kind of practice no so through the meditation what we does it develop the capacity of your mind it make your mind matured develop your mind to understand things so when it come to that kind of development so whatever the situations come in day to day life you capable to handle that without getting mad sad worried disappointed unhappy anxiety depression so like that then you accept it as it is but in day to day life if you cannot accept it or if you deeply have the worry unhappy sadness fear doubt that's mean it come as a result of the condition of your mind that's mean your mind is not clear that's mean too much information so it seem like your house so having when you are living in inside the house you need certain things that you cannot just live in a complete in a completely empty house but if you put too much what will happen it effect for your mobility so if it is effect for your mobility it effect for your abilities you become very limited person so that's a physical example you cannot move and if you move maybe you hit something and then it some it go to something else and you try to hold this one then another thing hit then another thing going to fall down then so like that why too much things it effect for your mobility how about once you clean and you keep only the necessary things and then you feel comfortable and then it brings the abilities to to be comfortable and when you have that ability is what will happen you become naturally you become more productive person to yourself you able you able to do maintain your own life more comfortably so with the mind also the same when the mind become free and when the mind become clear if the mind become matured to maintain things what will happen you not going to put unnecessary things in your mind or in your head you keep only the necessary things that you need that for life but at the same time if there is something unnecessary then you get out of it so that develop your mental mobility and abilities it brings the comfortable mind so when you have the comfortable mind your eye consciousness ear consciousness nose consciousness tongue body mind consciousness that everything start to work properly and then there is no doubt when there is no doubt you don't make mistakes and then you don't get late so this everything combine each other when you get late you make mistakes when you get mistake you make doubt see you have the doubt see it's like that so you reverse that once the mind become clear you get out of that all so that clarity bring through the meditation and so you you are the one who knows you do you need to practice meditation no not and 
Other thing is, there is you no need to bound to the techniques because when it comes to the vipassana meditation, there is no technique. You just you just learn the method, and then once you start to observe, and you just observe, there is no, you don't follow the method. But there are principles you have to follow, not the method. So the methods and the principles two different things. And sometimes we don't we don't know the principles, but we try to develop a method. In day-to-day life also same sometimes. As, as parents, when you raise children, you cannot have a method, then they kind of like you maintaining a robot. No, you follow the principles. And according to the principles, maybe you have to change the situations, but you keep into the principles. So like that, we need to come to practice meditation also. Remember, don't bound to the technique. Don't bound to the method. So the practice point of view, we develop the method to give you the principles. So take the principles and learn the principles. That learning principle is the, the technique. But you don't need to bound to the technique. So keep that freedom in you and go deeper. So with that, during Buddha's time, there was a young person. And his name is called Mahaliya. Mahaliya. So he's one of his students of Purna Kashyapa. So during Buddha's time, there were many people used to tell, I am a Buddha, I am a Buddha, I am enlightened like that. Exactly like nowadays. If you go to YouTube, you nowadays you see everywhere Buddhas, Buddhas, Buddhas. Everywhere enlightened masters. So during the Buddha's time also like that, everywhere people used to claim, I am a Buddha, I am enlightened, so like that. So there was a person called Purna Kashyapa. And he, what he used to tell. So whatever happened, good or bad, anything, there is no big reason behind this. No any big deal. It, it just it happened. The way it happened. And there is no path to purify or there is no path, path to unpurify. So there is no reason to be good or there is no reason to be bad. So things happen according to the way it is. And sometimes even today also sometimes people, people think like that. And as example, when, when things go wrong, in life and even though that uh, that you have ability to at the last moment even stop one single action you think oh everything went wrong just let things to go wrong you you let go things so when you eat sometimes you already full. No? And then you keep thinking now little bit, you know, on your plate, there a little bit food there. So now you already full. It's almost here. But you think, oh, I ate already everything, this little bit, you know. What the point throwing it away? I have to eat. So same like, remember that. You also have the same mentality like Purna. Why? Because you have the ability, the, the meaning of eating to get out of the hunger. Now already you've done it. But now you get into the action without thinking that you have to get out of it. So things happen or oh, let things to happen. So like that. And this 
uh, Mahaliya came to Buddha and asked, Venerable Sir, this is why I heard there is no path to purify. There is no any, any way to purify ourselves. Or oh, there is no any way that we can make any kind of demerits or in unprofitable actions. So is that true or is, there, is it different? So Buddha said, Mahaliya, no. There is a way. You can purify. And there is a way you can unpurify also. You can go towards the clarity and also you can get out of the clarity. Oh, venerable sir, how it can happen? So what is the method? So then the Buddha mentioned that through our actions, how we think and the, the way how we hold it to things. So look at, if you look at the Buddha's, during Buddha's time, look that venerable Devadatta, the Buddha's cousin, you know, from childhood, in the same palace, they used to live together. They used to play together, study together. The both very wise, study very well, in, in, you know, generally. And because they used to go to the same kind of teachers, same teachers in the same palace. But look what happened. Even he became a monk and he used to be close to the Buddha. But look what happened to him. He tried to kill the Buddha and he went against the Buddha. You know, not only him, he tried to manipulate others, even the king and try to push everyone to go against the Buddha. And at the same time, you know Angulimala. He was a serious killer. He killed all more, already, you know, more than thousand people. And to collect finger garland, he was trying to collect fingers, thumb. And he was in the jungle and killing people. He knew was a serious killer. And all king and all the army, everybody tried to go and kill this person. See, he was in the in the 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 forest, jungle, like a serious killer. And uh, he came to Buddha, and he purified himself, and attained to the enlightenment. And the venerable Devadatta used to be with the Buddha and go against the Buddha. So then you have to understand, see these two characters. It's any time the person can change. Don't think this everything already set up for you and things going to happen. No, from this very moment, you have ability to change your life. That is what the Buddha is teaching. Of course, there is a karma. Karma happened. There is a, when it comes to that, there is a, the previous karma, new karma. So the karma happened. That's why you have the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and this mind. Because this happened because of your previous karma. No, not what you have done in this very moment. Or whatever you have done, in a previous life or after this, you know, yesterday. So this, as a result of this, you have this today. That's why you experience in this. In this very moment, you have ability to change your life. And before the Buddha, no one used to recognize that. So then you have to, you have to look yourself. Where are you going? Are you allowing to this everything to keep happening again and again, again and again? Or are you able to at least to see yourself and find a direction or destination to even recognize, oh, 
I know need this, at least to recognize. Because if you don't recognize and allow thinking, oh, they whatever happened, you know, allow things to happen. You, you just surrender to that. In that surrender, what happening? Laziness. In that laziness, deeply underneath like a snake, anger. In that anger, deeply underneath like a snake, like a fire, hatred. So then whenever the situations come, little, little situations come in day-to-day -day life, what happening? It ignite, ignite. It's like gasoline, it's like petrol, you know, the any time, you know, can fire. So then yourself, you have to decide. At least if you see something, you recognize. This is enough. I don't want to experience this anymore in my life. So whatever you have done. Just imagine yourself, when you go through something, and why? Because if you don't recognize like that way, and if you don't decide it like that way, you cannot get out of it. There is no someone going to come to you, middle of you, and get you out of your path. No, there is no one going to come. It is only you have to handle this situation. No one can help. That is, the, that is the truth. So then you have to remember yourself during this time, you know, make a good blueprint to your life and decide yourself where you want to go, how your life want to be. Be very clear with that. And then you, you, you know where you're going. So otherwise, don't allow just things to happen. Because last moment, you can change. Have you seen, you know, like uh, soccer games? Maybe at last minute, sometimes somebody, you know, hit a goal and change the game. And some people used to watch cricket. Maybe the last over, you know, maybe the last ball change entire game, losing to win or winning to losing. So same thing happen in your life also. When a situation come, when you have a conversation, you know, one word, maybe that is the last word. You can change entire conversation to other side by one, just by one word. Maybe the situation is so, you know, that difficult and having arguments. Maybe you have to say only one word. You can, you can, you can, you can tell I hate you or you can tell thank you. It's completely going to change the situation. It is, but it is up to you. So how you can, can come to that kind of situation in the middle of this, all the fire. That is what the Buddha is saying. Because that is what a skill that you have to develop. It is a, that is what a profitable skill for you. It is not going to come because of you read books, because of you listening to a lot of things. It's not because of you educated and got had a good degree. No, it's not going to happen like that. Look, that kind of people, how they behave when a situation comes. So that comes out of the clarity of your mind. That is the important part. That is what here the Buddha say. So then what the Buddha mentioned, then how the, the path to clear yourself, how a bad person or oh, the, if somebody went wrong in life, how that person can come to right path or even the person go in the right path and how that person can go into wrong. So the reason is Upadana. Oh, Upadana, it's called Chandaraga. 
the desire to hold that is the reason when the person have desire to hold it doesn't matter how good that person it doesn't matter you sit next to the buddha and even maybe you giving head massage to the buddha or maybe you massage the buddha feet but if you have remember this if you have desire to hold or clinging to thinking this is for me my mind like that no one can stop you go down that is the moment you start to go decline but it doesn't matter that you are in the the most you know the bad place in in your life the bad shape in you know there's no and nothing in you can take as good completely dark but if you think that moment this is enough for me this anything is no need that is the moment you start to go towards the light so regarding what you have to hold or what you should not hold it is not about this the the material things or something like that it is our own thoughts arising with the five aggregates form feeling sensation formations recognition those are the things we clinging maybe we clinging to one thing or maybe we clinging to two out of that all five maybe we clinging to three things out of that five maybe we clinging to four things out of that five maybe we clinging to all the five aggregates inside us so form form means the physical structure the the whatever appears to you whatever the perception the whatever it delivers to you so that is the form so if you have the the strong attachment to hold it to that form remember no one can help you you going to have a difficult time but the thing is that likeness covered us and that likeness hold us and keep us as a prisoner so whatever the difficulties come to us we don't see it even we die sometimes we don't see that death we try to get it so when you when you see somebody beautiful or handsome or nice you know good looking and you think that you see that person no the deeper that you don't see that the the whatever the the desire that you you have you see that outside person even the things that all this material maybe when you see that of course there is a beauty there is a, that some pleasure in this outside world so as i mentioned in your at your home when you you need certain certain things to live yourself without having too much so like that seeing the beauty or appreciating the outside world or maintaining your life is nothing wrong what the buddha mentioned here you have to know this everything change but the thing is when you have the desire high strong what happens that you see this it is outside and you don't see it is arising from inside you and then you keep going keep going replacing 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 you keep going and that is what called sansara and just imagine this uh, it is only the 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 form or the rupa so how about the feeling and that is what whole our life we look for feelings we are beggars to feeling we go behind the feelings that is it 
you know, it arises, the feelings come, it disappear. Then what happened? Then again, we plan to get it next. And then again, go. So when you see only the feelings arising and that high of the moment, or moment of that feeling, and you go with it, you go, that is sansara. But if you see how the feeling disappear, and that will slow down your life. And the sensations, emotions, that they, this emotions life, we are addicted to that. Head to toes, we are kind of like emotional beings. So when the emotions come, it's like a current. And we caught up with it. See, when people are dancing, you know, people drinking, and the pe sometimes people are driving, you know, when the emotions get high, you know, with the things or the, with the people or the situations, look how they cannot recognize even, they go out of the mind. And then what happened? It's not going to be the same. It keep going, keep going, take us, take us to forward, forward, forward. And the formations. And we caught up with the memory. But it's all gone. But we appreciate even when we get the, you know, together. And the mostly nowadays what people does, you know, they say, they start to post online their, you know, the previous year's Thanksgiving, how they used to do them. And when you see what happened, you see, you think it, it, it of course, it, you know, you see it like a happy moment. No. Underneath sadness. Why? Because you are, cannot do this. And that's why you're reminding. So, that reminder deeper how the sadness worry. So then when you again and again, again and again, when you see it, what happens? Deeply underneath, you have the worry, disappointment. So with that worry, maybe you don't, you don't see it, but when something happened, maybe in that very moment, somebody come and ask you something and then you get mad. No reason. Everybody look why that person got mad. No one can find. Even you also don't know. Because you don't see the underneath that unhappiness that you used to be. So like that, the memory, mental formation, sanskara, this is huge. That is where we are living. And the, the deeply awareness or the understanding. So that we caught up with the, 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 the views that we develop in our life thinking, this should be like this, it used to be like this. So like that, we comparing this everything together and bound to everything. So there is a joy, there is a satisfaction. That is what called life. Enjoying form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognition, called life. It's nothing wrong with it. But the thing is, we don't see the change. So that's why we bound to it strongly. But what the Buddha say, anyone if is strongly bound to that, with the chandaraga, that means self-centered desire. Oh, this is my, this is my, this is my like that. And that is the way you unpurify yourself. So how, the, how then you can get into the purification? How you can purify yourself? When you see something beautiful, see the beauty. And at the same time, see that it's coming in you. It's coming in you. That is different. To see that, you have to have the clear mind. That is why we practice meditation. 
Because when you see it coming from inside you, you're totally going to be different how you're going to react to it. But now when you have the Chandaraga, you think it's coming from outside. That's why you kill people. You, you go and not only you, you manipulate others and you push other people and you get the help from others. You fight with others. You destroy things. This is because you, you see it is from... Why? Because you can see it. You can touch it. You can you you see it because deeper you don't see these five aggregates. So through meditation, when you practice the meditation, what happening? You recognizing this is really happening inside you. So when you see something, if you don't see it is happening inside you, if it is happening like outside, it look like it is like you're drinking salty water. Why? Because it increased the thirst. It never going to quench your thirst. That is what called samsara. So when it, things come from uh, to us from this eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, when you think it is coming from outside, remember, you're drinking the samsaric salty water. You keep going, keep going, keep going, like the deers keep running towards the mirage. No end. Maybe you enjoy it, keep, but there is no end. So what the Buddha said, to purify yourself, start to look inside you. And even you see the beautiful, a beauty, and you, you see everything nice, look nice, but see the connection deeper inside how it arises in you. Then you're not going to change anything from outside. You allow things to become outside, but you become more, more, more silent, strong, solid. That is what you need. Why? Because you know it coming from you. It's the reflection of you. So once you know that, you become more careful. When you see something, when you say, oh, it is so beautiful, you become more careful. Why? Because you know that beauty is not outside. It is inside you. Oh, I hate this. You become more, more careful. Why? Because that what you hate, nothing to do with the outside. It is coming from inside you. So when you come to that point, life going to be completely different. You become more alert, more, more aware regarding your own mind. That is what the the happiness. Because when you start to see your own mind and when you are able to maintain yourself and end of the day, when you go to sleep, it makes you complete. And even end of the life, when the day come to end this everything, you're going to be okay. Why? Because you know where this all coming from and you have seen it and Nothing go against that. No any resistance. That is where the, your purification happens. So in day-to-day -day life with the little, little things, you have to try this, you have to apply, and you have to practice it yourself. So with that, I bless upon everyone. With this good practice, may all of you be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. 
ಸಬ್ಬೀತಿಯ ವಜ್ಜಂತು ಸಬ್ಬ ರೋಗೋ ವಿನಸತು ಮಾತೆ ಭವತ್ವಂತರಾಯೋ ಸುಖೀತಿ ಗಾಯುಕೋ ಭವ ಎತ್ತಾವತ ಚೀಹಿ ಸಂಪದಂ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಸಂಪದಂ ಸಬ್ಬೇ ದೇವಾ ಅನುಮೋದಂತು ಸಬ್ಬ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿಯ ಸಬ್ಬೇ ಭೂತಾನುಮೋದಂತು ಸಬ್ಬ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿಯ ಸಬ್ಬೇ ಸತ್ತಾನುಮೋದಂತು ಸಬ್ಬ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿಯ ಇದಮೇ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಕಮ್ಮಂಗಾಸ ವಕ್ಕಯ ವಹಂಗೋತು ಸಬ್ಬ ದುಃಖಾಪಮುಂಚತು ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು